Mention Manchester's Moss Side area and you won't always get a positive reaction. Some people associate it with gun crime and deprivation, but what's often overlooked is the great sense of community spirit there, something a new initiative led by the North West Film Archive is keen to promote. There's a real ethnic mix in Moss Side and Hume. The potato famine in the 19th century brought lots of Irish families to South Manchester. Then a new wave of immigration starting in the late 1950s brought in men and women from the West Indies and the Indian subcontinent. The one thing they weren't prepared for was the weather. Out of the river, south of the river, make no difference at all, I still shake and a shiver is the English weather. Make you shake like a feather. When they opened that door on the airplane and I looked outside, it was white and I've never seen that before in my life. First time I came in England, 1956, there was a very cold, so much cold that you can't stand. At one stage, we had to walk from Whitefield to Manchester here because the bus they couldn't run. Serious. And children from all races attended Webster Street School. Webster Street School, that's where we met for the first time. The most unique feature of Webster Street was the playground being on the roof. We had uh, a cloud room upstairs where you take your jacket off and your school bag off and everything. And you used to play upstairs. I remember playing football and the ball going over the wall. Oh, yes, that's another thing. And you, you were not allowed to go downstairs. So you had to get the teacher to go downstairs to get the ball from downstairs because it was too scary going downstairs. At the end of your, your playtime, a whistle would go, and you'd have to line up in a regimental type of style. So all the classes would line up, mm -hmm. and you'd have to go downstairs, you know, class at a time. I had white friends in school. It was become the first house for tea. And I actually had chicken soup and bread. And they put the bread in the soup. And I thought it was the best thing ever. Because you know, we just have West Indian food. And I just thought it was this amazing thing. And I forget that it was so funny. The biggest threat to that community spirit came in the late 60s, when the traditional Victorian terraces were knocked down as part of a massive slum clearance operation. People from the West Indies who'd saved up and bought their houses here, then they had to sell their house compulsory, under compulsory purchase for a pound. They got a pound for it. We stood there and watched them pull the house down. One of my most vivid memories is my mum's bedroom, and you, you could see the, the old wallpaper on the walls and stuff, and, you, and you're looking up and you're thinking, oh my God, you know? And this big thing, you know, remember the old doors with the big ball on? We're swinging back and forth and knocking the house down, and, and it was like, wow. And, it, and it's, a, it's something you never forget. While some families moved to other parts of the city, most were rehoused in the newly built Hume Crescents, concrete streets in the sky aimed at keeping communities together. This vicinity around here, all the houses were there, all the city community was very, very close. And then when the flats, uh, the skyscrapers start coming, people start moving into flats as well. That was mainly in here. My friend lived in um, one of those flats, and I remember going in that rickety lift. Oh, the smell, the lifts would always like, the smell of pee and stuff like that, and graffiti, a lot of graffiti. Any prejudice felt by people living here came from outside the area. Those who'd come to Britain in search of a better life found that they and their children struggled to find work. Our grandparents were starve, our parents were starve, and they wasn't just starve of food, they were starve of education, they were starve of everything to do with the growing world out there. When my parents came here, they couldn't no way get, go to anywhere and get a good job. It just wasn't the. The system, even here, uh, gives the impression that uh, in order to achieve, in order to acquire, in order to be anything, one must be 
white, not, on, not in color, if it's that, that's impossible, but in behavior. Over 80% of young black men in this community, under the age of 25, were unemployed. So they were leaving school just expecting to be unemployed. I wanted to be uh, in literature and engineer when I left school, and I couldn't even get an interview. Back then, people felt like police were targeting black people, so you wouldn't, like, if you had a problem, right now you'd phone the police, but then you just wouldn't. Where do you think the problems are? Tell me what the problems are. Just the police and jobs. The police Some and no jobs? Yeah. I can remember in a class deliberately asking a class of teenagers, how many of you here have been stopped and searched by the police? And every single black hand went up. Kyla Babila should get beat up. She'd get a taste of her own treatment. Yeah, like, the the junctions. Out junctions get beat up with the junctions. So what you want to do is take on the police? I mean, is that what you're saying? You think that's the answer to it? Yeah. You watch now, there'll be loads of trouble. Moss Side took its place in history alongside Toxteth and Brixton as a flashpoint for the summer riots of 1981. And I remember waking up on the floor and hearing Mum talk to the neighbours and saying that she'd put us on the floor because it was kicking off out, out on the streets. Well, it's not a race riot although all the people involved appear to be black youngsters, but then that is the place where black youngsters live. I inside my house there, I look out, but I never come out. I don't open the front door either, but I open the window and see the police and the boy have been running up and down from one place to the other. The community was still strong even after the riots. You could still go about your business. Obviously, immediately after the riots, you had this curfew thing on where the police were stopping everybody and, and sort of stuff. But at the end of the day, once it all quietened down, we just went back out of our business and everything just as if it never happened. Our Saturday night was not made up of going into town because it was never accepted. But we still wanted to celebrate Saturday night, didn't we? So of course we would put on our glad rags and we would go out. Infamous places, I suppose, uh, to others that didn't go and drink in those places. For a start off, there was the Nile and the Reno that I remember. We had a really good family friend and he used to um, work in the Nile. And even being anywhere near the Nile and the Reno, it was a no-no, because if you're seeing us, it's going to report back to our my parents. So it was like, certain patients couldn't really go because it was going to get back. Over the past 30 years, the area has benefited from redevelopment and regeneration, like these new houses on the site of the former Manchester City football ground. Despite all the changes, what still remains in Moss Side and Hume are the memories of the people who make the area so special. Community spirit and the sharing and the looking after each other, I think that, that was key. That was a key thing. Great times here. Great times here. I, I, I wouldn't change my memory of Moss Side, you know what I mean, as much as I wouldn't change the memory of my parents. No chance. And if you've got any photos, memories or footage, then you can get in touch via our website. It's bbc.co.uk slash inside out slash northwest. Well, that's all for this week. Don't forget you can...